with Santa Catalina, the girl who is uh, the hosting in this conference. Hello everyone and welcome to Santa Catalina School here in Monterey. My name is Emma Russell and today you will hear from the rest of the Catalina team on our plan for non-proliferation in the Middle East. To start off with, non-proliferation should be one of the most widely considered topics in policy making. Why is it so important? For example, if we have Johnny on the playground, who is not kind to people and acts unpredictably, while on the other hand, there is Sam, who is nice, plays with everyone, and is relatively calm, what would happen if Johnny was given a water gun? He would start spraying people because he acts out. Wouldn't you rather want Sam to be in charge of the water gun? Or even better, what if there was no water gun at all? The same applies for countries that have weapons of mass destruction. It is extremely dangerous for a country similar to Johnny to be in possession of a nuclear weapon. This is why non-proliferation needs to be taken with utmost importance. Seriously considering non-proliferation has been hard, especially in the Middle East. The region has already been in conflicts over religion, resources, and power. When oil was discovered, it only added to the list of causes of conflict. Recently, the international community has been witness to the toppling of governments, such as Syria and Egypt. Meanwhile, efforts have been made to get countries in the Middle East to sign and ratify the CTBT and NPT. However, countries still view possession of nuclear weapons as a very strong deterrent, and as long as at least one country in the region possesses the nuclear arsenal, it is very difficult to argue that others should not develop it for their own protection. The Non-Proliferation Treaty has three pillars, non-proliferation, disarmament, and peaceful uses of nuclear energy. The non-nuclear weapon states have agreed to neither build, procure, or buy slash import nuclear weapons. The NPT requires its signatories to negotiate with other states on stopping their nuclear arms race and guide them to disarming their nuclear weapons. Participants of the treaty must also comply with the IAEA. The states that have signed the NPT and ratified it are Afghanistan, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Saudi Arabia. The state that has not signed the NPT is Israel. One of the main reasons as to why Israel has not signed the NPT is because the Israelis are relying on their nuclear weapons as a deterrent force. They want to use their weapons of mass destruction to prevent any of their perceived Arab threats from compromising the region. Hello, I'm Nia. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, or the CTBT, is a treaty designed to restrict the testing of nuclear weapons. This treaty is in place in particular to stop countries from developing nuclear weapons to begin with, based on the idea that if a country cannot test a nuclear weapon, a nuclear weapon cannot be built. The CTBT was started in 1994 and has been ratified by 162 countries. Your organization uses monitoring systems all over the world in order to prevent nuclear testing. The states who have signed and ratified the CTBT are Iraq and Afghanistan. The state who has signed the CTBT but has not ratified it is Egypt. And the states who have not signed the CTBT are Syria, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Israel. Countries who have not ratified or signed the treaty have a variety of reasons for not doing so. While it is believed that Israel is waiting for a push from the U.S. to sign the CTBT, they have stated in the past that they have no intention to ratify the treaty. Other countries, like Iran and Egypt, are possibly waiting for other countries, for each other, to sign the CTBT. Hi everyone, my name is Candy. Our method of display for the dynamics of the region is obviously very confusing. We display the countries and their relation to other countries this way in order to show the confusion and difficulty untangling the relationships. Egypt's foreign policy. While Egypt's foreign policy expresses a desire to create a nuclear weapons free zone in the Middle East, they refuse to make any commitments, quote, for Arab non-nuclear states until Israel joins the NPT, unquote. That is from MFA DACA on Egyptian foreign policy. This has caused semi-strained relationship with Israel because Egypt does not want certain states to have special treatment when it comes to nuclear weapons. 
However, Egypt wants to remain in good standing with the United States, and therefore Israel, which creates a conflict of interest. To remain in good standing with the U.S., Egypt's domestic policy includes becoming more democratic, which the U.S. believes will make Egypt and Israel's relationship go from neutral to good. Israel and Egypt have had cool relations and are made trade, trade partners, even though there is tension with Israel's nuclear program. This is Egypt's most pressing problem in helping stop non-proliferation in the Middle East, besides the civil unrest. The past few years, Egypt has been, quote, rebuilding its strong ties with the GCC states, unquote. That's from WashingtonInstitute.org. Egypt also has recently been making better relationships with other Middle Eastern countries in the GCC, which is the Gulf Cooperation Council that is, central, that is centered around political and economic similarities, especially Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait. Moving on to Iran's foreign policy. Iran's foreign policy is very complicated due to its capability of making <coughs> nuclear weapons. Interestingly, Iran was the first to propose a nuclear weapons free zone in the Middle East and still maintains this ideal. Iran is believed to have sought nuclear weapons, but, quote, Iranian leaders who claim that Iran's nuclear program is peaceful have been enthusiastic about the planned 2012 conference on establishing a Middle Eastern zone free of weapons of mass destruction, unquote. It's according to Arms Control Association. Even though this is a somewhat older source, it has merit in that Iran has maintained the principle of a nuclear weapons free zone in the Middle East. A difficulty to achieving a nuclear weapons free zone in the Middle East is the poor relations that Iran has with Israel and the U.S. Iran is working on creating a better relationship with the U.S. through talks with President Obama, which seem to be making the Israeli government uncomfortable. Iran, similar to Egypt, wants a nuclear weapons free zone, but as long as Israel is in possession of nuclear weapons, Iran will keep developing their nuclear power, which they have said is just for peaceful purposes. Moving on to Syria. Syria's foreign policy is complicated due to its lack of political ties with other Middle Eastern countries. Syria's relationship with Iran is the only solid friend that Syria has in the region. Iraq and Lebanon harbor neutral and cool feelings towards Syria. But for the most part, Syria remains isolated and independent from the other Middle Eastern countries. Israel and Syria currently have very strained relationship due to the fear of the civil war spilling over the Syrian border into Israel. Syria has shown interest in acquiring nuclear weapons in the past, but has halted that due to the civil unrest. However, Syria might be inclined to start looking for nuclear weapons because of the threat that Israel poses. The Nuclear Threat Initiative website states, quote, Syria's adversarial relationship with Israel is the most important factor influencing its national security policies and could motivate Damascus to pursue nuclear weapons, unquote. Moving on to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a huge country with major oil reserves that help to form trading partners and friends across the world. <coughs> Saudi Arabia has limited nuclear power capabilities and is against nuclear weapons in the Middle East. NTI states, quote, Saudi Arabia reaffirmed its support for a zone in an official statement at the 68th session of the United Nations General Assembly in 2013, unquote. Hello, my name is Kayla Felton. I am continuing with the political and nuclear relationships of Israel, Palestine, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Israel has developed very poor political relationships since becoming a country in 1948. Specifically, their relationship with Palestine has been heavily strained due to the removal of Palestinians in order to establish Israel as a Jewish state after the Holocaust. They are the first country in the Middle East to possess nuclear weapons. They began in 1955 when the U.S. gave them a research reactor, according to NTI. They maintain a policy of nuclear ambiguity by neither admitting nor denying their possession of nuclear weapons. In 2007, Israel, atta Israel attacked Syria's al Qaeda nuclear facility. The two countries have been in constant conflict since 1948, <coughs> and it is assumed that Israel attacked out of fear of having a nuclear neighbor. Israel has signed neither the NPT nor the CTBT. Israel's nuclear activity and political animosity has made it a popular enemy in the Middle East, with the U.S. as its main advocate. Continuing with Palestine. While Palestine is not recognized as a state by many countries, 
It is important to discuss its political unrest and what that means in the Middle East. The conflict between Palestine and Israel has also strained relationships with the United States. Palestine is a nuclear-free state and has ratified both the NPT and the CTBT. While Iraq is a member of the CTBT and NPT, they did invest in illegal nuclear programs before the Gulf War. Under the dictatorship of Saddam Hussein, major development occurred in the fields of nuclear and chemical weapons. While Iraq now claims to be a nuclear-free state, it is speculated that they have not completely disarmed their earlier programs. Iraq is supportive of isolation after the recent war and does not seek to develop international relationships with surrounding countries. Afghanistan has a stable non-nuclear approach and has ratified both the NPT and CTBT. While Afghanistan is not a nuclear threat, they have unstable relationships with Iran. Iran has given Afghanistan more than a half billion dollars in aid since 2001. The Afghans are uncertain as to what the Iranian intentions are and if they will seek more control over their foreign policy. Violence is still very much an issue in Afghanistan and has limited its capabilities of negotiation with other countries. My name is Nora, and um, our conclusion. Uh, we have concluded that in order to achieve nuclear non-proliferation in the Middle East, we must aim at also achieving peace in the region. By creating non-threatening political relationships among the Middle Eastern countries, a nuclear-free zone might actually emerge. Therefore, we have created different options to tackle this situation. When presented with different options, it is critical to understand the implications they make as a whole, as well as the negative and positive effects. These options here are to help you develop your own resolution to the conflicts in the Middle East. Whether you agree with our presented options, or if you see a more effective way of creating nu nuclear weapons free zone, make sure to weigh the outcomes with the utmost concern. After discussing the possible options, we would like to take some time to hear how you would attempt to achieve peace in the Middle East. We recognize that the options you are about to hear are idealistic and may not be viable in a complicated international community. We also acknowledge that we chose not to dwell on the moral disagreements and social unrest in the Middle East region because the scope of our project focuses on non-proliferation. Let's get started. These three options all have the same goal of promoting nuclear non-proliferation in the middle via achieving peace in the Middle East, but by different means. Since we represent an American school, we view them from the prospect of the US foreign policy. These options were created to generate discussion and think outside the box to come up with a new option that better ensures non-proliferation in the Middle East. First, in option one, Nuclear non-proliferation would be achieved through the gradual, gradual withdrawal of U.S. military presence in the Middle East, such as its bases in Turkey and Saudi Arabia. However, the U.S. would still be involved in economic relations with various Middle Eastern countries and still be present politically to mitigate tensions such as the conflict between Israel and Palestine, Iran, and with countries governed by political Islam. First, the U.S. would negotiate with the Middle Eastern countries to recognize Israel as a state. Israel would in turn have to recognize Palestine. Border control and economic relations would be established in turn for equal access to the Holy Lands in the opposite regions. The U.S. and Russia would sign agreements promising to suspend supplying weapons to the Middle Eastern states while still maintaining economic relations in the region. This would also apply to establish trust among other Middle Eastern countries and an attempt to reduce anti-West sentiments. UN facilitated peace talks would be held to encourage Israel to sign and ratify the NPT to ensure that other Middle Eastern countries also abide by the NPT they have signed once the threat of Israel diminishes. Option 2, however, takes a completely opposite approach from option 1. Option two is based on the idea that an increased military presence will give the U.S. a stronger foothold in the Middle East, where it can easily monitor countries that pose a threat to non-proliferation efforts. The U.S. can also monitor oil exports in Saudi Arabia with a closer presence. An increased military presence will also intimidate countries like Iran to think carefully before pursuing nuclear weapons and also aid local governments to combat terrorism within their own borders. 
By supplying weapons and communicating intelligence with our allies in the Middle East, the U.S. can pursue non-proliferation who, non who pose a threat to the U.S. domestically and prevent them from getting the materials necessary to create nuclear weapons. Then there is option three, whose main goal is to promote human dignity above all. The UN peace talks will take place by political leaders who do not have geopolitical interests in the conflicted regions, countries such as Brazil or Canada. This option also supports the creation of the International Fuel Bank as an incentive for countries to avoid developing nuclear weapons, where any country can have equal access to nuclear energy for peaceful purposes under the agreement that it will not develop nuclear weapons of their own. With that agreement in place, other countries will feel less threatened by their neighbors and will have an easier time giving up nuclear weapons if they have them. By easing this political tension, countries will be encouraged to coexist peacefully. Now you have the opportunity to create your own option. If none of these options seem sufficient for your standards for policy in the Middle East, we would like to hear your ideas to create a new option. Please share your thoughts. Um, so if all of you guys could just confer with yourselves, like in your school group, for a few minutes, and then um, just maybe come up with some ideas um, for Make Your Own Options. 